the best a man can get. Welcome back to First Things First. Look who's here. FS1 NBA analyst Sarah Kusha. Hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you. Great Great to see see you Sarah. Sarah. Are you guys represented by the same firm? Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, okay. No, Don't my firm's know. trying to bring them both on board. I, I reached Nick's out to personal. Jenna. My personal. Oh. Nick Wright firm. firm. You're Absolutely. starting things up early. Get right to It's only management. Monday. Sarah and I don't fit the mold of your Whoa, whoa, whoa. Firm. The, my mold. Listen, we, that is no. false. That is true. False. Sarah definitely fits the mold. <laughs> Jenna, go ahead. The NBA, it's a fake law firm. What do you the, care? The, I want to be part of the fake law firm. The NBA Finals <laughs> providing us with two riveting stories. Sarah, tell me if I'm wrong. The series itself, for one, and the availability of Kevin Durant. Trailing the Raptors 3-1 in the series, the Warriors finally getting some good news. KD practiced yesterday and is now listed as questionable tonight in Toronto. Sarah, is KD's return the only chance the Warriors have at this point? I'm going to be honest with you, Jenna. D do the Warriors have a chance? Absolutely. Would the return of Kevin Durant bolster another scorer, another playmaker, mm -hmm. another guy in the lineup on both ends of the floor that can make a, an impact? Absolutely. I think Toronto is going to win this series regardless of whether or not Kevin Durant returns. When you look at Kevin Durant and consider the type of player he is, and he was a guy we were talking about as the best player in the NBA at this mm -hmm. time prior to getting hurt. He's been out a month. This is an injury that obviously it seems like there's been some difficulties or, or maybe just some differences in expectations of when he may be able to be back. So I don't think we can expect to see any bit of the Kevin Durant necessarily of what we saw prior to him getting injured. And that's no knock on Durant. It's just a part of trying to come back and reacclimate yourself to the level that these guys are playing at. And the NBA Finals, and more than anything, we can talk as much as we want about the Warriors and Kevin Durant, what they need to do. Give credit to Toronto. I'm blown away by how they've been playing. They are an excellent team that seems to be clicking and playing at their very best. So to me, it is less a question about what the Warriors going to look like with Kevin Durant. It's more about what type of team Toronto is. I appreciate is. how you have so much respect for the injury. It's something that athletes have to deal with. As a fan, it looks so easy. And we get a little confused by because what's a strain? What's the difference? Well, Clay strained his hamstring, and he was out. In 48 hours, he was back. It's totally different. I don't believe that Kevin Durant, first of all, has strained his calf. I believe that he's torn his calf, and I'm a person that tore both of my calves. And if he hadn't torn his calf, he would have been back by now. And that's what you don't have a strained calf and out for over a month. So that's what leads me to believe that he's torn his calf. And typically people would say, well, if it was a regular season game or something like that, um, I might not play. If it was a playoff game, I would play. Kevin Durant couldn't have played. He couldn't have practiced. He couldn't get on the court until yesterday. And the only reason why he got on the court yesterday, because they're down three to one. All right. If they were up, he wouldn't be thinking about playing. Actually, if the series was tied, he wouldn't be thinking about playing in game five. He would be trying to save himself for either game six or a heroic game number seven. So for me, I've been involved in athletics too long to believe that a person is going to come from sitting on the sideline. I don't care who they are and get into an NBA final game with the intensity for which they're playing at and think that he's going to be anywhere close to an all-star. Look at Boogie Cousins. When you don't look at what will Kevin Durant most likely look like, don't look at Clay. Look at Boogie Cousins, who missed 45 days. Because when your lower extremities are hurt, very um, seldom are you able to get the type of cardio. So your lungs, you can't run. You can't get up and down the court. So regardless, he's not going to be free to be able to shoot a jump shot if his legs and everything are bothering. Like, I just believe it's a huge problem. I believe it's false confidence that they're trying to lean on him. Like, this is the hocus pocus, like, oh, okay, if we can get him back. Toronto, I believe like you, because Kevin Durant won't be 100%. That's why Jen, Jenna and I picked them to win the series. He won't be 100% the rest of the way, Nick. I think Toronto wins this series either way. But I also think at this point, by the way, it was not my preseason or my pre-series prediction like it was there too. I, but KD has to play for the Warriors to have any shot. And it's not because of just what he adds on the court. That Willis Reed in that famous game, he scored 
four points. The Warriors, when they were down 2-1 to the Grizzlies in the second round of this run, they made a structural adjustment. We're not guarding Tony Allen. The Warriors, when they're down 2-1 to the Cavs that same year in the finals, they made a structural adjustment. We are starting Andre Iguodala and going death lineup from the opening tip. The Warriors, down 3-2 to the Rockets, they made a structural adjustment of who they were playing and how many minutes. They, there's only one card to play. It's playing Kevin Durant. Now, maybe you got to treat him as just a rich man's Alfonso McKinney, not Kevin Durant. But to quote Draymond Green, 75% of Kevin Durant is a lot better than 100% of other people. And just because Draymond said that, Nick, that don't make it right. Players say stupid stuff all the time, all right? When you can't run on the court, McKinney is better than Kevin Durant. He'll never have the confidence, but his ability to be able to get up and down the court. People say that all the time. Oh, I read that. Listen, if you can't run, it's not, you're not the same player. Your mind's not the same. You can't get to the same spot on the court. And all those examples that you use, you know what happened? They played great defense to turn it around. The Warriors can't play great defense, and they definitely can't play great defense with Kevin Durant, who's not 100%. So how did they I well, okay. I'll just say this quickly. I think you're both correct in that. I do think Toronto would have to guard them differently if Kevin Durant's on the floor. You still respect him in a different way. They've been hanging off non-shooters. They've yes. been able to do different things defensively uh, that they wouldn't still do even if Kevin Durant is 75%. I also think they've been able to mix up things defensively, like starting Fred Van Vliet in the second half. They can go smaller. They want to push the pit. It would put guys in different positions on both ends, but but I don't think that he would be able to impact the game Let's just in the say same this right now. ways. Who's he going to guard in the front court? Just tell me who he is. Pascal gonna, Siakam. Oh, so, how, and, and so you, don't think, you don't think Pascal can take him off the bounce? Well, I think, you, I think you hang off Pascal Siakam, and you give yourself three feet, and you say, if you hit jump shots, we lose. Like, I think the, I, I mean, that was my instant answer. I think there are, there are places. We were worried about where you were going to guard Clay, and Clay obviously missed one day instead of a month. And Clay all of a sudden looked like same old Clay was the best player on the court for the Warriors. I, I don't think you. Don't play Kevin Durant if he gets cleared because he's going to be a defensive liability. I'm not sitting here saying he's going to come out and play, score 30 points, but I think the Warriors feel beat. They, they, to me, they, for the first time I've ever seen them in this five years, it looked to me like they looked across the court and said, these guys are better than us. The last three minutes what are we of the supposed last game, it, it, you can feel it. You just, what are we, these guys are better than us. They need something to shift the paradigm, even if it's fake, even if it's smoke and mirrors. And then they, they can start convincing themselves, well, we win this game, then we're not going to lose the last game ever at Oracle, even if they mm. obviously could. Oh, yeah. They've lost yeah. both games at Oracle this, yeah. this series. Like You have to tell yourself a believable story. And I think all of those stories, no matter how they end, begin with KD with playing. Kevin's this rat. is the thing. When you don't have success, it's easy to create something. But when you've been successful and you know how the recipe works, if you've been baking apple pies the same way and now all of a sudden I'm getting ready to change it, oh, I'm getting ready to start using artificial apples, it, it, trust me, the pie will oh. suffer. This team is not a great team, Nick. They have not been great all year. And for us to think Kevin Durant, after a month, I mean, it took, him, it took him two weeks to find his calf, okay? <laughs> that was one of the biggest problems. I mean, we just, and I know you respect it. You can't think that that intensity, a person can come off the street and get in there and make an impact. We are wrong in thinking that. Artificial apples. Sarah, stick around. Coming up, Kawhi isn't ready to celebrate just yet. Hear from him next on First Things First. Jen, have you ever had Brandy apple pops?